Shit, I didn't think about that. Down to going <laughs> down to going to the place of work at the end. The bake shop. Yeah. Forget a kiss. <laughs> Harry, that's not a real thing. I just liked it. <laughs> <laughs> Monday, everybody. Yo! Yo! December 20th, 2021. We'll get started with weird things in a minute. Hello. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yo. Oh, man. Oh, man. Big holiday week, huh? You want to know what? All these other lame podcasts that are taking weeks off. Not us. We're here. Grinding. Back in the day when we first started launching our podcast, Magic Podcast uh, Empire, I mm-hmm. use that term very, you know, uh, <laughs> jokingly. Um, but we launched, we decided to launch over a Christmas break. Yeah. We thought that like people would be getting iPhones and stuff and be looking for things and having new content. I don't know that it worked, but that was the plan. Yeah. I, I've found I, I tend to. Uh, look to like bingeable stuff over the holidays when, when there is a lack of the weekly stuff that I've come to know, or you have best ofs or something like that stuff that you feel comfortable skipping. Um, But that's Mm -hmm. where I first got into cocaine and rhinestones uh, uh, was I was just puttering around over the holiday weekend. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh wait, six episodes of a show that I can listen to. Like that's really cool. Yeah. Uh, do, uh, do you have any of? Uh, like, has there been anything since Cocaine and Rhinestones to compare, like, like, like that you've discovered in the in the last year? Um, there's been really good stuff. Nothing that is not. No two podcasts have really affected me in terms of me understanding why they work and and really being appreciative of why they work, like. Uh, uh, you must remember this and cocaine and rhinestones. Those, those, those are the two that to me are there. Although I, I remain in consistent awe of Darknet Diaries, considering uh, uh, how well those are all structured, and and the fact that he's able to find you know to make that a weekly show and not like a <laughs> like put together seven episodes on on a thing. Is, uh, trust me, putting out the seven episodes uh, of a thing. <laughs> it's difficult enough uh, uh, to do it weekly is a whole different. Really looks easy. Lines. Yeah. Looks like people yeah. do it all the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, I of- never heard oh. of cocaine and rhinestones and I'm thinking, well, knowing you would it be wrestling, but it really sounds like a country music podcast. It, <laughs> it is. is. It is. It is. Uh, uh, and it's good. The first season's exceptional. The second season is. Oh, uh, oh I think we lost Andrew here. Oh, no. Oh, okay. He's just turned into a Skype logo. Oh, there we go. And he's back. Okay. All right. Everybody about ready to do the show? Yeah. Mm-hmm. One sec. Got to wash my mouth down okay. with my Rockstar beverage. Mm. Uh, it's blurred out for reasons. All good. All right. All right. I'll count you and Andrew in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Ryan Brushwood. Ahoy, hoy. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. Well, we're going to start off with a story sent to us by Mr. or presumably R.J. Jackson. And, uh, Gentlemen, 
RJ wants to send you on a trip. Okay. Cool. Uh, I love uh, I love uh, trips. My bags are packed. Yeah. Uh, I'll little, pack my bags too. Little, sure. Little little place to explore. Mm-hmm. And uh, let's talk about what you're going to need on this trip. Start suggesting items. I'll tell you if they'll be good or not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, I, I, photographs I think... of my children. <laughs> eh, maybe. Won't help you, but fine. Uh, okay. Okay. A, uh, a, a sturdy boots. Yep. Definitely going to need those. A okay. Dungeons Master's Guide for the latest edition of Dungeons & Dragons. Maybe. Maybe. Can't rule that out. Uh, sturdy gloves. Yep, those are going to help. Okay. A Generation 1 iPod. Yeah, you know, maybe. 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 A heat-resistant tunic. Huh. Could be. Could totally be needed. Okay. Four burritos, three of which are healthy. One is Filled with neurotoxin, and the fifth of which just looks gross, but is actually fine. Yep, might need it. You never know. Okay. Mm. Uh, a snake killing device. <laughs> Maybe. Totally, totally possible. That would be needed. A uh, 1999 Microsoft Encarta CD-ROM. Mm. The sum total of humanity's knowledge like... at the time, may I remind you. Uh, yeah, but do you have a laptop for it? Just having the discs isn't good. Hmm. A 1998 compact desktop. Cool. All I right. Mean, the desktop. Because I'm out of compact. I'm out of space at this point. And by the way, we're gonna have we're to gonna find eat. monitors there because I don't You're have room gonna, for no, the monitors. Yeah, I, I just bring a laptop. Just bring a laptop. Oh, okay. Sorry, but none of the new laptops have DVD drives that we can play in Carta on. We'll bring a 1998 laptop then. Okay. Not a desktop. Okay. But then we're going to lose saying, some fidelity. All right? like, it's just going to run slower. Oh, God. Like, what, 45 minutes? I mean, minutes what happens if life? we, I mean, like, okay, I swear, I swear to God, I'm going to be really pissed if the first thing you do is like, you arrive at the land party and I'm sitting there with a laptop holding my cheese in the wind. A 1982 copy of the Empire Strikes Back picture book. Yeah, maybe. Could be good. Okay, we're off. We're at the airport. Where are we going? I, need, I think you need a couple more items. Oh. Uh, an oxygen tank. And uh, without any regulator. regulator. Yeah. Matches. Uh, an unregistered handgun. Uh, cool. All a, right. A, a copy of, uh, Dianetics. Who knows? It may strangely come in handy. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Yes. Ready for your trip? Yes. I have no regrets for any of my selections. We're, go we're going to Yemen. Okay. Okay. Ready? Going mm -hmm. to Yemen. Mm -hmm. And uh, here, put some, put these helmets on, guys. Okay. Okay. All right. Got you. Got your climbing gloves on. Yep. Sure. Sturdy gloves. Yep. All right. Okay. Uh, we're going into the desert in the Al Mahra province. Okay. Okay. And uh, there's a well there. And mm -hmm. the well's 300 feet across and several hundred feet deep that apparently nobody's ever been to the bottom of, and it's known as the Well of Hell. Uh, question. Yeah. Well, was this just there and somebody found it? Or a well implies that somebody dug it, in which case at some point somebody somewhere would theoretically know where the no, bottom is. No, natural wells... Yeah. No, wells aren't always dug. Yeah, hold on, hold dug. on, hold um, on. Guys, guys, two seconds. I plug in the desktop. I I put in the Encarta uh, CD. This will just take a second. Right. I'm just going to I'm just going to read this copy from 1982 of the full color picture book of The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. Hey, uh, I'm just going to open up my Funkin' Wagnalls, which is your Microsoft Encarta. Okay, hold on. I I'm just going to uh, I just got to sign in here. 
Oh, I don't, I don't know if we're connected to. Do we bring a generator? <laughs> While he does that, let me give you some background on the Well of Hell. Oh crap! As recently, <laughs> oh Siri as works. Recently as, Thank God. <laughs> as recently as this summer, yeah, many officials admitted they didn't know what might be down there. Stories of demons and other supernatural figures, known as jinns or genies, that live in the well, have circulated among locals throughout the centuries. Many by nearby residents don't even like to talk about the hole, let alone visit for fear <clears throat> for fear of bad luck. All right. So, so a group so, of Omani cave divers. Yeah. Hold on, the Omani cave exploration. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. It's the curse. It's the curse. The Oset made what is believed the first descent into the bottom. So they hit the bottom. They went to the bottom. Uh, now, when you say yes, went to the did. bottom, like 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 they they jumped in with a parachute or or what they 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 had some rope and and the rope Hell, stopped yeah, going used... down. Or... No, yeah, no, no, uh, James Bond style. They jumped off the edge and the Union Jack was I'm, I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> on the look, parachute. Uh, I I heard the words they went to the bottom, and I'm trying to understand what that means. Mm. Started at the bottom. Yeah. Now we're here. They they repelled. They repelled down. Yeah. They actually went all the way down to the bottom. Uh and and how deep did it end up being? Three hundred and sixty feet. Uh, that's far. Is this gonna become like every the chai video now where it's like everybody's parachuting down just to show that they can? I mean, it, it seems like a bit uh, remote. Uh, like, like it doesn't seem like it would be necessarily an Instagram vacation. This, it's this a narrow, it's a narrow hole too. Yeah. You know. uh, so this, this would be more of like the 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 scientific element of it. Uh, I mean, so number one, all right, here's the question that we are asking on this show that nobody else dares to to put voice to: Did they find genies down there, uh, or demons? Or demons. Or, or did, did Raza Jins. Ghoul get upset that exactly. they were messing with his pit? Because did Bane climb out of there? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Beat uh, out like Bane. Pit. They didn't say they found any. Gotcha. That doesn't mean they weren't possessed and they came back. Mm, and this is same. all going to unfold in a series of horrifying accidents. Yes. Uh, how big does the environment change from uh, the surface? If we're in, uh, you said Yemen, right? Um, like, I'd imagine it's fairly hot at the surface and very sunny. And then, except for like maybe one hour out of the day, the bottom of this pit is going to be very cool and not sunny. Uh, is it possible that there's a substantially different environment down at the bottom that, that maybe some things are living that can't live on the surface? Uh, maybe they, they didn't find much down there. They found like some water droplets. Uh, they found bright green formations and cave pearls. They found things like this, you know, they mm. found, uh, some stalagmites. And so they found some, you know, things like that, but, uh, yeah, to the temperature it would make sense that, you know, um, it would have a lower temperature there. Yeah. We can build so some condos. question. So what about the imprisoned genies or other other supernatural spirits that is placed at the bottom? The expedition expedition leader said there were snakes, but they won't bother you unless you bother them. Uh, first of all, that's not a no. Yeah, that's not a no. I mean, it's always snakes, and yeah, they eventually come bother you. Yeah, as we know, as as, the, uh, as we're down there, I'm like things. ah snakes, and uh, 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 I just throw the compact. Uh, desktop at it. Yeah. <laughs> Snake's like, hey, uh, can you help me out here, buddy? Uh, got a Snickers bar, uh, <laughs> something. I've been trapped down here and uh, I'm a snake. No hands to climb out. Wait, how, if you, if you did find a snake down there, can a snake climb 350 plus feet up the side of a wall? I mean, if, they, if they're ever going to do it, it'd be there. But I doubt it. Looking at this picture from the bottom, it seems like it it kind of is uh, kind of like a dome shape. So it would be it would be almost I, entirely upside down at some point. I'm gonna issue a trigger warning because Bryce Brian's question. You now need to Google climbing snakes. 
Mm. I mean, from, from what I have been told, and this is uh, ancient knowledge from my grandfather bestowed upon me at the tender age of nine, uh, all snakes can just climb all walls and infinitely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, look yeah. at that. Uh, we're looking at a snake climbing pretty much straight up a tree. Wow. It's, wow. Got, an, it's got an amazing method of wrapping itself around. Uh, this is terrifying. This is what they don't show you. You see the snake on the branch. You're like, how did it get there? This is how it gets That's there. It. It's fast, so, too. Yeah, I'm going to guess that uh, 300 feet is not very far for a snake to yeah, come and go as it got, pleases. But it's climbing up the interior of a cylinder, though. So let's try, like, snake climbing out of well or something else. Yeah. like... It could sure stop, it could stop, climb that stop tree. Surely, being in the can. pocket of big snake, yeah, showing but, these snakes being able to do anything, these do it all snakes. Uh, I guess the, what makes it even worse is like uh, when snakes go into free fall, they're pretty good at like, you know, wiggling their bodies and kind of getting as flat as they can so that they just sort of reach terminal velocity like a cat and just like, Bling. all right, we're fine. Just imagine like being up a tree and like there's a python and like, ah, you can't get me. And then you just see it being able to do that where it just wraps itself and starts to like, oh, game over, man. Oh, boy. <laughs> so uh listen we have not ruled out demons or jinns or malevolent spirits that escaped um did uh you know did they come back and start putting a lot of money into dogecoin who knows no. hard to Gin say coin i'm seeing i'm you know seeing a lot of data say? about snakes climbing poles but not not quite up a dome or an upside down wall try wall, wall. try try cl snake up there, wall there is some about a, on a like cliff. brick wall that would be a roughly a rough equivalent of, of what we're seeing here with this big old pit. Open up the pit. That's what they should have said before they did their exploration down into it. <laughs> it seems like a very pro move. Open these up the pit. To make, yeah. And then they all start very gingerly kind of scaling down for scientific purposes not to and as they're anything. going down, somebody else is whispering, let the body <laughs> <hit> the <floor. laughs> Uh, all right. So there is a snake. Yeah. So it's on a vertical brick wall yeah, mm -hmm. it's... in what looks to be somebody's quaint English garden. <laughs> that was possible. It's like a wacky wall walker. Oh my god! There's a snake. There's a snake, Martha. Just go get it. The... I ain't never seen a snake on the brick wall before. <laughs> Why? Well, I didn't think you there was any snake. <laughs> I thought there was a crack in the foundation. Any boulders in him, so he didn't go up into that nest. <laughs> 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 it was, well, right. was the, just just a bit that was, outside. <laughs> that was well, a story about like I think somebody's talking about how you know Monty Python. They're like they always thought like man the way they make fun of women with those voices. And their, his wife went to go visit some old English ladies like garden club. Yeah, <laughs> and realized that they sounded exactly <laughs> oh, no. like the Monty Python sketch. <laughs> Uh, well, folks, uh, if, if you would have listened to that clip any longer, you would have heard the man uh, uh, talking about the snake on the wall by saying, oh, I'm so upset that, that this snake situation is happening because I was literally just about to go into my house and subscribe to the Weird Things Patreon at patreon.com slash weird things. Well, why don't you just do it anyway? You've been talking about it for months. You said, oh, I want to give those boys one dollar every episode. Well, I would uh, do that, and I will. I plan on doing it as soon as this snake gets off my wall, because mostly what I want to hear How is the early. Snake being on the wall? Stop interrupting me! Uh, I want to hear uh, uh, the After Things show before anybody else, which is made exclusive for Patreon. Well, you can make that happen right now. The snake's not going anywhere. Uh, well, then maybe it'll go away. You want to know it'll never go away? The consistent entertainment and informative nature of the Weird Things podcast. I mean, I'll log in. I'll do it for you if you like. What's your credit card? This is my reboot of Fight Club. That's the. That, <laughs> it's just that. That's it. It just ends. Do, Fight do, Club do, Two do, do, do. title card coming to theaters exclusively next next year. Spider Snake, Spider Snake. <laughs> just isn't that going to catch on? I know. But, no, uh, I'm sending Bryce some coordinates. And uh, we're going to play another guessing game here. And that is, hey, guess what? The When you look at Google Maps, the way those images are ca are captured, 
sometimes it's satellite, but more often than not, you're actually sometimes looking at aerial photography where a plane flies over the camera and takes it over. And, and most of it's that's there, but you take a plane, fly it really high up, aim a camera down and take photos. Uh, we caught something on a map, on a Google map. You can find this thing on a Google map. I want some guesses of what was caught, a thing that you would normally maybe think you might catch on a Google map. Uh, Like a cave-in happening in the moment? All right, so we're talking about the uh, aerial photo, not the street view. Right, aerial photo, yeah. Aerial photo, not street view. From above. Because all sorts of crazy stuff happens on street view. Well, right? yeah, like yeah. people yeah. are coming into ice cream joints or leaving ice cream yeah, joints. Leaving sometimes ice cream. people eating ice cream. Sometimes like their license plates are just there begging to be fuzzed out by Google. Mm -hmm. um, so what do they normally catch that they wouldn't otherwise Crop circles. I ma I, ma I made my guess mm. of 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 like a, a a sinkhole opening mid mid moment. So that would be like they like say you could notice like dust or something like that because there was some way that we could immediately tell that this was just like the earth opening up. Yeah. Hmm. I would say hmm. Like a caravan of some kind, like caravan mm. of like, lost, lost souls, a bunch of dark elves who've a dark elf leave. caravan would be it's something a, that you don't see every object. day. It's an object, and Thor too. I dug. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. When speaking of dark elves, uh, an object, a single object, an obelisk. Yep, remember, object. Oh, remember when everybody was going obelisk crazy? Yeah. I do remember no, that. No, no. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. The, uh, uh, with, everybody was planting them and saying yeah. they discovered them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, how young we were. <laughs> everybody was like. But it's not an obelisk, is Oh, it? I'm so scared of this obelisk. And then, you know, a couple months later, I'm so scared of this respiratory virus. I, I Out of the corner of my eye, I We feel didn't like lock I, down I, for I the obelisks, something. did we, oh, oh Biden? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I feel like I have to recuse myself because I think I, I saw out of the corner of my eye. Oh, I just realized I left that <laughs> yeah, monitor on. Okay, yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with dark elves, crop circles, migration. I'm going to go with uh, secret government aircraft crash landed. <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. with uh, a, a, the, the rare uh, uh, McDonald's Burger King combo restaurant tried once <laughs> and never spoken of again. <laughs> because of some weird did congressional... That, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no, no, it was it was some uh, uh, anti, uh, uh, you know, monopoly thing yeah. that they had it to was, make it was one like, version of it. It had to function and sell two hamburgers, and then both companies it, agreed they'd destroy it. They sold, like, the big McWhopper or something. That was it. it was, yeah. And it was too right, powerful. <laughs> it was too powerful, <laughs> and, 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 and people lost for five years, <laughs> and then they came back. It was, you know, it caused the blip. Uh, gentlemen, we're about to zoom in. Where are we zooming into right now? I, I would have to zoom out Probably to tell you that. what. Probably uh, Minnesota. So it looks like a a a, a, a stealth bomber. A stealth bomber. But yep. weirdly, it looks like the trail starts after the nose cone. <laughs> it looks it looks like it. Landed and skidded out and spun around sideways, and then some farmer got bored of it and started mowing the grass around it. I Holy crap! So I don't think that that's a ground path. No, it's I, in I, flight. Th that's just yeah. Again, that's what I'm saying is that's what it looks like. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I I highly doubt that's what happened, but yeah. So so it's just it's just mid passing underneath. Yep, it's just just it's the self stealth bomber just just whizzing right by underneath wow. this thing, and you can see no. Okay, so notice what you're looking at the photo. Um, if you look at, you can see chromatically. You see the the yellow, the red, and the blue, and the green. That happens to do with the photo sensors. So mm. basically, because as it moves fast in the shutter speed, as you can see the rate at which that the the, the electronic shutters closed, and that's why you get the blur effect like that because it's going really fast. And they, when they do, and this may actually have been satellite. And when you do satellite photography, 
there is such a there's I've watched the videos. It's really tricky because you're you're moving at like you know twenty thousand miles an hour, and so you have to have like even like your your CCD or whatever you're taking has to like the each line has to go at a certain rate and adjust for the movement of the Earth below you because you're always taking photos of things that are moving fast. So you can see a little bit of that effect here. Has the U.S. government ever given any public hints as to how many stealth bombers or stealth jet fighters yeah. or whatever we have? We know, we know like stealth bombers because of like budget requisitions. We have a pretty good idea of those. And also you can kind of like, uh, we can kind of like chart those because when they count them in like movements and stuff. Um, so if you put up, put up, go to like Wikipedia, you'll see they say 21 of those were built. Um, hmm. Then there, there was a, there's a really good YouTube channel called The Mustard, which goes all sorts of into really good into aircraft and stuff. And he did a pretty neat one about the F-17 and talked about how this thing had been secret for a decade, the F-17 fighter. And do you know why, if you look at the F-17, remember it has those sharp facets and like you, if you look at this B-2, what we're looking at, it's more smooth. Do you know why the, F, the F-17 had those sharp facets? Why is that? Well, because remember they said like, okay, the radar profile, the idea was to avoid have any particular surface that could have, have a larger radar profile. So that's why you have smaller areas. The reason of the sharpness of it was because the computer programs at that time could only calculate flat surfaces. So oh, it was wow. designed, oh. it was one of the first aircraft, yeah, first aircraft designed by, a, like one of the first ever designed by a computer. And because the computer couldn't calculate curves, it had to do those sharp facets. So it did that like, hey, this works. We're just going to go ahead and make it like this because we don't trust ourselves to try to smooth them out. Later, computer technology got better, so that's why the newer stealth you know, jets are very, very you know, shapely. So this is still way. on Google Maps? Like you can just search for this location yep. and, you can, and you can see this thing? Uh, yeah, because it's not a secret plane. Okay, yeah. That, that's what I was asking. I wonder what the line is for the government that makes this one like, Oh yeah, sure. Show them the the the, the cool B two bomber thing. Who cares? Whatever. So there was one of the way the Russians found out about some of our stealth planes was it in Area fifty one or uh, there's another facility too where we've been testing stuff. Is we would take this stuff out and we knew when their satellites were coming overhead. So we, if the satellites, the Russian satellites weren't overhead, we would take these things out to go like you know, work on them or service them or whatever and test them. And then we'd put them under cover when the satellites were coming by. Well, the problem was, is they would pull these things out and in the middle of the hot sun, it would, the ground around it would get warmer and then they would pull the thing away. And even though it was no longer out, when a satellite came over with infrared, it could see the shape. Oh, and see, wow. you know? That's bonkers. Yeah. That's like, that's crazy. You look at all this, you know, like, and you're like oh, like, 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 who would think about like, Oh shoot! You know we just made a suntan outline in the dirt of our thing. There's a lot of the stuff now has moved towards drones, and so if you go, you can do a deep dive into like some of these like uh, aviation blogs and sites and stuff, and they start talking about all these bigger. And, and the problem we have when we think about drones is we tend to think about like things that are a couple meters across. Drones can be you know bigger than Cessnas. Drones can be huge. If you look at the size of a Predator drone, that's bigger than a Cessna jet. It's a big ass thing. You could just strap a can to be on top of that and have a person into it, put a person in there. So a lot of the stealth stuff we go, oh, well, it's just drone stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. Drones are like, can be really effing huge now and yeah. big and weird shapes. Oh, so there you go. A B2 captured. Um, How often are those things just out there? Like, are they just like flying oh. them to make sure that like they don't catch any, uh, mm -hmm. Any any cobwebs? Remember, you know what? I yeah, bet they're pilot. never even used. I bet they're just yeah. there for safety, just in case. Uh -huh. The U.S. motto. <laughs> well, they 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 do. You remember, your pilots have to maintain flight hours. Some of them, you know, maybe you do do patrols, etc. So there's there's that. Um, I had a friend that was driving somewhere in California, and the, he saw this uh, truck with like, a, I don't know, like a truck with like kind of a convoy and there was a bunch of like tarps on it on top. And he, they pulled into some facility, and he, you know, you can't remember specifically where it was, but watched them pull into a facility. And then he took out his iPhone, he's making photos of this. And then a few days later, his buddy who had been driving got contacted by the FBI. That's like, we need you to delete those photos. Really? 
Uh, and he's like, and like, how did they know? I'm like, because they had other vehicles following to see who was there. And, you know, like Boy, crazy stuff. A, so there's a lot. Of- that's a whole question. Like, as far as like authority or whatever, like, uh, I mean, do, do, do they get to do that? Like, uh, you're the one flying around with a big old red cape Hold and an on. S on Hold your on. chest. Uh, Brian, your, mean, phone, your phone's ringing. Ring, ring, yeah, ring, okay, ring, right. ring, 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 yeah. ring, yeah. ring, ring. Hello. Hi, is this Brian Brushwood? Uh, maybe. Who's this? Oh, pff, buddy. It's it's your old pal, uh, Doug FBI. I work for the FBI. They make you take their last name. <laughs> uh, anyway, what's popping, fam? Uh, uh, nothing. We were just talking about whether or not like it's incumbent like for the government to, short of martial law or a time of war, tell its citizenry that they can't take photographs of things that are happening in public. LOL. You're so funny. So funny thing you should mention. Remember the other day yeah. when you were taking pictures outdoors of the sky? Yeah, there was a guy flying around with a big red cape, had a giant S on his chest. I thought that was pretty unusual, so I snapped a photo of it. You're so hilarious, man. I got it. I'm telling all my friends these jokes, man, because they are really, really funny. Do me a favor. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I need you to delete all of those photos. Well, I, I was gonna I was gonna post them on the internet no. because they're very valuable no. and this is a very no. unusual thing. So I wanna remind you again, my name is Doug FBI. I work for the FBI. Right. So just between me and you, you know, we're working for you, okay? All the time. Right. Really hard. Okay. So I just need you to just do one fun little job for me. Right. And those pictures of the sky, I just need you to delete them uh, well, right now. Uh, Let's okay, go ahead and get out your phone right now. I mean, first of all, we're on, the phone. We're on the phone to- right now. Uh, so, yeah, so, but, it, but, but let's say, let's say I forget. You can switch, you can I switch apps. You know. Hi, hey, this is Johnny Justice Department here. Yeah, um, this um, is my yeah, friend yeah, Johnny. Yeah. Yeah, hey, uh, great. I hear your concerns and stuff. You know, I was speaking to, what was that guy's name? Uh, Julian Assange. <laughs> yeah. Was that his name? Foreign yeah. name. He brought up some of those same concerns. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, just see how that turned out. You know, I'm just saying, not a threat. Not a threat. Oh, That's man, all. love. Oh, hey, this is my friend Iris IRS. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 she's really annoying. Yeah. Could be a sight more annoying if you don't delete the photos. <laughs> uh, uh, man, yeah. I, I don't like her. She's and really, you, really frustrating. You, and just, just add, I'm going to be helpful here. Uh, have you read all the laws got passed with some of our Department of Homeland Security issues and some of these other things? Oh, no, you couldn't have because they're not public. So, why don't oh, you that's interesting. The yeah. being photos. able to cite like secret laws that are yeah. made available to the citizens? It's because they're secret yeah. doesn't yeah. mean they're not real. In fact, uh, here's a law that I know you might not know. Your name is now Doug. Oh no, yeah, but hmm. only my first name, right? It's not like I'm actually. Oh God, where where did I get this suit? Yeah, why am I wearing sunglasses? Now? <laughs> exactly. Oh no! And now you need to give us your phone. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> and we're deleting. Yeah, I saw the ring. Yeah. I break <laughs> I have the- seven days to go find somebody who has some photos. I break delete. the curse and I make Doctor Strange magic <laughs> and I push you through it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, um. We can get very political here, but <laughs> we'll spare our audience. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I think, I think like, uh, Brian, in all seriousness, that is something that is, you know, uh, concerning when when a a government agency can can politely ask you to delete photos off right. your phone, well, 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 if, regardless uh, uh, of whatever their their uh, things are. If 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 I'm reading your point uh, clearly, it's the question is not how can they, or, or I'm asking the question should they. And the real question is, uh, can they? And the answer to can they is yes. Well, can they? Like, I mean, like if if somebody called you and said, uh, uh, okay, well, you should do this. We would your country greatly needs you to do this. Blah blah blah. And you're like, cool. Instagram posting the FBI totally told right. me not but, to publish but, but these. We've already seen that there are like non 
punchline uh, operations where it's like, well, let's just ruin this person's reputation and make an example out of them. Yeah. And, and you know, I think that there's probably a line between, you know, how realistic some of that stuff is, how much of it is, is, you know, somebody just, you know, looking to cover up their tracks. I, but I, again, I don't think our government would ever, or people within it would ever maliciously go after or punish people based upon disagree with them politically or otherwise brian that's just crazy talk and so you know the rights of everybody are respected all of this so yeah anyway man good talking to you conspiracy theory click i hung up i'm doug fbi (laughs) all right uh classic new character let him know to make room all right (laughs) uh so um i got a cool story for you by cool i mean awesome terrifying whatever and uh one of those things you're like oh we can do that now um you know one of the things that they do with artificial intelligence systems is try to build systems that can like want to play to test them as can it learn to play a game like pong Mm. right i saw this this is good yeah there's a company called cortical labs that is building chips that are kind of specially designed chips because their goal is like hey you know what's really, you know what makes for really good computers and like computation and problem solving? Uh, actual brains. And you know what actual brains are made of? Like neurons, like living neurons. And you can get neurons to survive outside of an organism. So what if you have a cluster of neurons and get it to solve a problem? In this case, cluster of brain cells in a dish playing Pong. Cool. But guess what? What if we put it up? against a competitor that was a, a human or something that, no no so there was the cluster neuron so the human element was just the neurons learning how to play pong okay and then you matched it up against uh, an, AI an ai learning to play pong who do you think won uh, uh well let's see one is a technology that i only found out about 10 minutes ago the other is an emerging field that has taken for i'm gonna go with the ai Still got it, baby. The neurons <laughs> beat them. Really? Yeah. Wow. Eat, eat it, Inky Poo. John Henry wins. Mm-hmm. So this company, if you go to the, the Cortical Labs website, it's kind of cool. Their whole idea is like these, you know, these neurons are able to hold certain kinds of states and remember stuff, and they still function in ways that we don't fully understand. And they say that they were able to build them. Uh, you know, they're able to build a system, you know, a really full fledged Pong system on an AI is going to be great. But for a small collection, seeing like how well they will get to work, they make a very interesting claim on their web page because they talk about, hey, like, why, why use biological neurons? Like, you know, the brain, the human brain only uses like 20 watts. And one of the goals, you know, speaking as a guy who also works for an artificial intelligence organization is when you're trying to build AGI, artificial general intelligence systems that are as capable of performing tasks as people are, uh, one of the caveats in there is you need to make sure they're efficient. If it costs you a million dollars every time you run a machine, not an effective system. And right now we're competing with humans whose brains work on 20 watts. Mm. So, you know, that's, you know, the challenge. So, and, uh, is this a case of what, like, uh, stem cells are cultured into a bunch of neurons? Um, uh, I, like I'm, I'm hearing the words biological neurons, but it's not clear to me, human neurons, animal neurons, uh, extracted from what and trained to play pong by what? In the article, that's human brain cells. That's wild. Uh, cool. Yeah. So um, that's uh, one of the pathways, and that's, you know, if you have systems, there's, you know, things that people are working in, into is like one, as we've mentioned maybe before, DNA storage, the idea of using DNA to store information, because DNA could be pretty resilient, and, uh, you know, a billion years later, we still have DNA carrying information, and then now we've got, you know, let's continue this. And I remember an article in, like, like, scientific america or popular science from like the 1980s which talked about like they had this it was like a spider jet with like a grasshopper and the idea was like creating like chips that used you know animal or whatever you know brain cells or something because there the idea is it could be resistant to an emp 
because you could have like, you know, an EMP attack and the chip would still function in theory. I don't know how everything else would function around it, but the point <laughs> is very interesting. Of course, though, one of the things that happens is there's a conference every year called NeurIPS, which is a conference of neuroscientists and uh, artificial intelligence experts and machine learning people. So you bring people from two very, very different fields. You know, one's very biological, one's very mathematical, whatever, but that's been going on for decades. And they kind of do presentation papers and they learn from each other. And as AI has evolved over the years, we'll make a discovery. The first neural networks we made in AI were actually based upon looking at the, the structure of the optic nerve and looking at how information moved through there. And then we've been going further and further into the brain and AI has, every time we make an advancement about how the brain works, AI has been able to find a way to incorporate that and learn from that. So maybe, you know, 20 years from now, maybe it won't actually be a biological chip or maybe it will be, maybe it'll be a chip, a specially bespoke biological system designed to process information. That's I mean, bonkers. Yeah, that is, that is, yeah. that's heavy doc. That was my favorite thing about like Alien and like Blade Runner when Ridley Scott depicted robots is when you cut them open, it wasn't wires. It was yeah. like goo and just milky looking stuff. And you're like, and they kind of expanded that idea further. Like Blade Runner is a bit more like, wait, are we using the word robot or Android instead of clone? Like, yeah. Are these just clones? Are these just it, like clones of people that? Yeah. Is, is that just you know, a pejorative that we are calling it because we need to separate them sociologically from, from other people? Yeah. Artificial persons yeah, no, just because they were yeah. grown in a lab yeah. or whatever. Robot. Get yeah. out of here. It's a replicant. Like, mm, oh, no it's replicants and it's got DNA and it's like, hey, sure. Sure. This isn't a, a person. No, no. That's a trademark term. Totally different. <laughs> yeah, Sony owns that. Uh, by the way, your McDonald's Burger King collaboration just had me just going like, I'm like, the conviction at which you guys were able to do that from that. Um, there actually, if you type in Burger King McDonald's collaboration, uh, there was a, a point at which uh, one Burger King proposed for charity or something like that, that there would be a McWhopper. Okay. The idea that you could go to either one and order a McWhopper to sort of like celebrate both of them. And so that was, you know, one attempt at that. But uh, I wouldn't surprise me if somewhere there was some crazy kind of like collaboration or something, you know, some experiment because, you know, like you said, like at some market or something like that, they had to like, ah, oh, we can only have one fast food restaurant in yeah. the Jersey Isles, you know? And I uh, would, would the, 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 and this could be a false memory, but I think the, version i remember was like like quite literally one pop-up store for one event or something but uh mm -hmm. but that could be totally misremembered i i wouldn't be shocked i mean if you look at where fast food is kind of going and and the fact that uh you know the the, the chains that are popping up and and thriving are not quite in the same vein that mcdonald's and and burger king were i i wouldn't be surprised to see some sort of like hooray for fast food kind of like consolidation element yeah uh, it's like it's like yeah. uh where they all the beer companies a couple of years ago were about to do like a huge like you know beef it's what's for dinner level like just industry we're all together go have a beer kind of thing uh, and then it fell apart because like I think like Coors Light made fun of Miller Light or something in a Super Bowl ad and that then the whole thing kind of fell apart. But I wouldn't be surprised if at some point we see like a you know what's there when you need it? Fast food. Fast food's great. Uh, uh, celebrate by getting a a a, a Mick Whopper Chalupa uh, uh <laughs> with with the kernels, herbs and spices on it because uh, fast food's great. I'm all right. I'm going to go out on on a limb and say that uh, uh, the fact that all of those so many brands are secretly all just one company is a weakness and not a benefit, and that the the odds of them uh, 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 broadcasting that would would be fairly slim. Like it's not a helpful thing that KFC and uh, you know that Yum Brands owns Taco Those Bell. Those three, yeah. yeah, right. I mean, it's like that's not an. I mean, it's a tactical advantage. Not like you know what my favorite thing about Taco Bell is is that it's owned by a mega corporation named Yum Brands, who also owns all these other guys. Yeah, but also it's like 
All right, so what what would you if there was a industry wide fast food thing that was doing like a gigantic here's to fast food Super Bowl ad, right? Let, let, let's say that maybe even the thing that you buy there, let's put that on the side for a second, but just a hooray for fast food Super Bowl ad because fast food sales in general are plummeting. They need to reverse it, certain trends. It, it would be McDonald's. It, it would be, uh, you, you would enemize hunger and it's like, uh, and, and it would be pure numbers. Okay, sure. Now you're thinking of the actual, <laughs> the actual message, but I'm saying like, who would be a part of it? It would be McDonald's, Burger King, Yum Brands, anybody I mean, else? Uh, uh, I, I would, I would imagine that nobody would want to lend their personal brand to it because, uh, and instead it would just be something, um, like, a, like, like it would be like, a, similar to no one brand is ever associated with the American Dairy Board. No one brand is ever associated with those beef. It's what's for dinner. No one brand is ever associated with. It would be one of those. So, 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 behind the scenes. But you're saying, but you're saying, in, 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 in the Super but Bowl the ad, in the Super Bowl ad, you're never seeing a McDonald's logo. That's you're correct. never seeing a Burger King logo. You're That's never correct. seeing any logo. That's correct. What you see is never is, seeing any bags, any cups. You, you are seeing uh, numbers of people who were safe from starvation. Number of people who got their start and went yeah. on to become CEOs. Can I? All the positive can, messaging. Can we take a break now? Yeah. And could we enjoy we and celebrate it. world world peace, which is yeah. what, what Burger King wanted to have. The idea is let's, if they could work together, the world could have world peace. And let's have a world peace day burger. And what we're going to do, if peace day burger, mm -hmm. it's going to be a hybrid of a Whopper, a Danny's bacon slam burger, Wayback's Wayback Classic, Crystal's Cheese Crystal, and Giraffe's Brutus, which I never heard about, combined all together. And we'll put it in a pop-up that's in a parking lot shared by McDonald's and Burger King. Go on. And it was done. It's a thing that happened. Wow. The peace day burger. And it actually looks burger. pretty damn good. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's what we were thinking of. Yeah, I bet you that was. But there was there was a McWhopper campaign that Burger King uh, pitched. pitched, but apparently it didn't happen because no one at Burger King actually pitched it to McDonald's. It was all just a PR campaign. Uh, <laughs> And so uh, that was that. Well, turns out that was the reason because no one. No, actually... no, no. May I? May I? They pitched it. It was actually like the UK Burger King. They pitched it on August 26th, and the September 21st, they went ahead and did the Peace Day Burger, which was this. So, yeah, I guess it, was it a like a, a it would have been a, a real like thing. business people like. There was a meeting taken and they pitched it, or was it like a press release that's like, we're here by pitching to McDonald's the McWhopper? Uh, uh, it, Burger King it was the U uh, even acknowledged right, that it had not uh, told McDonald's in this article that I'm seeing. Uh, well, so, how, yeah, it, yeah, it was a UK UK Burger King tweet tweeted out, hey, okay. let's go do this thing. So it came from an official Burger King account in the UK. Let's go yes. do this Peace Day Burger. Okay. Uh, and then McDonald's, whatever, didn't go along with whatever. And then on the 21st of September of that year, they had opened up a pop-up and they made this burger combining all these different things. But so instead of the McWhopper, they brought in all these, because I think all the other fast food brands were like, hey, we'll be a part of this. Oh, uh, so they got on board to, to, to make the ultimate burger. They, they, they sell it for one day in a, in a parking lot. Give it away. Give it away. Sorry. Uh, well, look at that. Uh, and how how yeah. long ago was that? 2015. Uh, 2015, yeah. and we're still talking about it. Now that's PR. <laughs> yep. That's it. That's a good. That's a good PR. It's my new character. <laughs> PR rating Italian. <laughs> so let's do some picks then, so you can tell us your. Uh, hey. Your PR. Uh, the. Uh, a scene of the show. It's a show called uh, The Witcher. I love uh, The Witcher. Uh, uh, <laughs> so many uh, monsters. Uh, I really like uh, the action. I have no idea what happened in uh, the first season, but I kind of just picked up as we went along because I accidentally skipped a uh, 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 last season on thing, and they don't have it readily available in the menu for Netflix. But I really like... We watched the first uh, uh, episode and a half, and... Uh, uh, I just like The Witcher, uh, man. Uh, uh, it's just colorful. Uh, yeah, just dropping in straight in on season two, and and uh, I saw it. No, we watched the first season. Oh, and we okay. really liked okay. it, but God, for as like that season 
went. You, like, I remember things that happened halfway through, and then I remember being like, Jesus, we're not even, like, close to the end of this story. And I remember vaguely there was a big war, and people did some things, and people went places or whatever. People did some things. Yeah, some people did some things. And uh, uh, so, yeah, that was... Uh, uh, I, I didn't remember exactly where all of our characters were left, but uh, I just, I don't know. I like the fact that it is a show that is very committed to understanding every episode has X amount of crazy characters, X amount of inventive violence, and X amount of charisma from your likable leading cast. And like, uh, it is always one step ahead you're never bored by a magical universe, which is always the worst when it's like, look at this insane realm. Let's all talk at a dinner table for an hour. And it's like, that's boring. That's what normal. That's what happens in my world. Somebody, can we please have magical elves? And this show says, yes, you can. Uh, that's awesome. Uh, so my kids started watching a uh, anime on Funimation called Shadow's House. And I just happened to walk, walk in. Episodes are really, really short. I think they're 22 minutes a pop. Uh, so I came in at, you know, halfway through the first episode, which means I missed all of 10 minutes. And uh, uh, I tried really hard to not pay attention to it. And meanwhile, so off the wall, so out there, so crazy. Like, it's very clear there's a deep allegory they're trying, they're headed towards. But, but, but. I, I ain't figured out which one it is just yet. It's weird. It's about uh, these uh, uh, pitch black soot beings uh, that are uh, called shadows, and they get themselves some living dolls who, you know, do whatever they're told to do and look like humans. And uh, none of them know their purpose. And boy, are they stingy about releasing any facts about where this is headed or anything. But, uh, but uh, I, I'm... Continuing to enjoy the unfolding mystery, I'm about halfway through it right now. Starting to get a wee bit frustrated with it's like, all right, are you gonna tell us or no? Uh, but uh, but but uh, it's it's very very gorgeous, beautifully crafted, all that stuff. Whose house? Shadow's house. Uh, I got a pick. I uh, I I I fell into a ravine over the over the weekend, and I'm not. A ravine? Oh my god! Are you okay? And I'm not ready Should to. Should we get the rope? I'm not oh. ready to climb out just yet. So open up the pit. So I found out last week that uh, an old game that I had played a lot as a kid had been remastered and re put out on modern on the phones and on the switch and on the computer and all. And uh, I I remembered like oh you know I had a fun time with that game that was all right. Um, but I never got like really in super into it. Apparently in the 20 years since that game out, people really got into this game and figured out how it works. Uh, I'm talking about Monster Rancher, uh, specifically two, but they've got Monster Rancher one and two, uh, deluxe DX out. And they are those original PlayStation games. The ones where you would put, you could put another CD in and it would generate a little like Pokemon type monster for you. And the difference between, the big difference being, uh, unlike, say, Pokemon or Digimon or any of the other games at the time, those are all, like, adventure games, right? Like, you start here, you get strong, and then you beat the game. This is an open-ended, like, business game. Like, you raise a monster however you want. You can fight if you want. You can combine them if you want. Um, and there's a lot a lot of, like, end game, um, very complicated ways to, to, to actually progression in the game but it's it's really interesting and and having gone back to it two decades later now and having you know looked at all the guides and see how people have broken apart the game um it feels totally different it feels like a totally different game even if you're like min maxing because you still have to work without having a lot of money you still have to make your way through and i'm i'm super digging it the big the biggest thing that they've added i think is uh, a fast forward mode the game will just play at two times speed because it's a lot of menus and they it's it's an old game so everything is a little slower and and so you just play it at double speed and you just you're just blasting through it's great man i i'm i'm having a blast with it in in monster rancher ravine Mo that's right i'm i'm deep down here don't come out m double r don't don't no rope yet maybe in a couple <laughs> weeks 
Um, so yeah, but uh, and it's on the phone. I was worried about getting it on the phone because I was like, well, what if I want to stream it? But now that I have it on my phone, and then like there's guides and all the min maxing, and you just it's there's a certain chore to it, right? Just, okay, this week I give him this item and I do this, and then this week I give him this item and I do this. Uh, that would not be interesting for anybody, and now I can do it anywhere. So I think it is also very good. The the mobile port is good. It's like twenty twenty some bucks, uh, but very worth it. Very, there's a lot in here. Cool. Yeah. Andrew? I'm I'm going to double down on a pick that Brian had made before out of like, uh, Brian had this sort of like, I try to think. I think I like the thing. I don't know. We'll see. And that's Saturday morning all-star smash or some all-star hits. Hey. I still, I, I still have not jumped in yet. I'm still afraid to watch it. But, but How far but, did but, you get? How uh, far did you uh, get? Oh, no, no, no. Quite literally just seeing the pitch on it and hearing Bryce okay. talk about it. I've watched one or two. I've watched two, maybe two and a half episodes. But it's I've great. watched it all, gentlemen, so I have the knowledge. Um, it is amazing. It builds. It is not. It starts off, you thinking like it's disconnected vignettes. But then it progresses and they all tie together. The idea is that's the Saturday morning show in kind of like the early 90s. I was not watching a lot of cartoons at that point because I was an adult. And I did not realize like these parodies, like some of me like, oh, I guess that's kind of a like Paul Rudd is in the creative criddles where he's a, he's a creative a guy who's a creative designer with these like, you know, magical bear like creatures living in a shed in his backyard and one has scissors for hands and one have paste and stuff and he's trying to land an account you have randy this this dinosaur that gets brought into the 1990s and who's like a skater dude and dealing with life and so the animation style spot on for that period they actually bring in voice actors and people worked on that kind of stuff like frank uh, welker etc um it's these vignettes like you're watching the Saturday morning all-star hits show where Kyle Mooney plays these twin brothers and it's great CG because they're in the scene together and you'd think that it's two two twins and they introduce the cartoons and then you start to get like the story sort of evolves and like, you know, the twin brothers, one of them gets a voice, gets a job doing a voice on one of the cartoons and he becomes a hit. And what happens to the twin brothers? And then there's the evolution of the plot as they come back to each cartoon as it progresses. Uh, I am a big fan of this. I think it's super, super clever. And it got to the end of it. I'm like, I hope they do another season because I thought they brought it all. The cohesive sort of storyline was great. And the cartoons they parody, like I, I thought some were like completely made up. Like they have like, you know, they kind of make a thing, talk about dumb, like, there's one on there about like slingers, like these, you know, shooting rubber bands things. And you're like, oh, OK, that's just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. And like, no, that was based on an actual cartoon, The Legend of the Hawaiian Slammers. Wow. <laughs> and, then, and so you get into this like, oh, yeah, this they have a cartoon called like uh, Pro Bros, which are they're the lesser known brothers of famous athletes who go out and solve crimes. And that's oh, actually wow. based off of. Yeah. Pro stars. Pro yeah. stars. Yeah. Gretzky, uh, Jordan and yeah. Bo Jackson. And so, yeah, it is. I, I didn't know any of that and I got a lot out of it. Have you watched that sort of stuff? I think you'd get even more out of it. It was just fun and just really, really well done. It's the theme really is about brotherhood. And I would say that's sort of there. So big fan. Thank you, Brian, for bringing it up. Saturday morning, all star hits. Uh, dude, well, you know, I'm, I'm glad you pioneered on ahead and declared the territory well, safe, I think Bryce safe to first. keep going. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I just, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, first, well, oh, I, I, kept, I did keep going, though. I did keep going. He did. He, I did. he did. keep. I did. Because I'm, like, I'm like, oh, that's right. Uh, yeah. There's no winners, so but like, Andrew wins. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I was, because I was in, I'm like, this is kind of neat. Is this just going to be every episode like this? And then the next episode picked up on that cartoon story from before and it keeps progressing and it keeps evolving and you're like oh this is this is really well thought out and really neat and then when you get to the point at which you know people have murdered each other and there's an oj simpsons like investigation that pops up in the middle of the show to tell us about the, the storyline of people from before i'm in yeah that's awesome it's been weird well cool. That sounds like a lot of nice surprises in that show. Cool. Uh, 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 I actually have an appointment at three o'clock that I have to make, so I'm gonna have to bow out for after things. Okay. Uh, okay. Andrew, do you have a heart out as well? One one p.m. Uh, Pacific is my time, so we can get rolling. We can be good. 
So we'll have about 25 minutes. Cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, give me one extra minute, and I will get us set up for that. I'll be right back. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We will be here with the After Things program in just a moment. Mm-mm-mm. Everybody, what's going on? We're all having a good time. I thought you were going to wang chung tonight. No, no, no. We're not wanging. We're not, not chugging, wanging Bryce. Chung. Not uh, in 2021. You're you're doing some travel. Is, uh, is that right? When, when are you heading out? We are Thursday. On Thursday. Thursday, man, those uh, uh, pictures of uh, the uh, the airport, Hachi Machi. Uh, but looking bad, I've not seen the airport. Uh, ay, ay, ay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. We have clear. We're not gonna check bags, so. Oh, that's. I that's think quick. it'll be okay. That's, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, the clear stuff is usually pretty good, especially when it's congested, because I I don't get a sense that like the clear lines ever get very busy. Well, they shouldn't, right? Because you're, you're you're chucking these losers right into the front of the line. Also, we're but you later, would think TSA we're, we're, Plus we're, we're, is the same way. I appreciate. Yeah, that. the only so but clear chucks you to the front of that line, mm-hmm. right? So it's like there is a separate but equal line uh, mm-hmm. for TSA Plus or pre-check, and then clear chucks you to the front of that if that gets long. So uh, it, it it's all it's all it's all gonna be fine. We're a little bit later in the day anyway. Um, so we're like two o'clock. We're not like oh, that's not bad. Uh, uh, super early in the morning. Yeah. Though it is, what is that, Thursday? So that's the day before Christmas Eve. Yeah, that'll be busy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think, I don't know. I don't know how we're going. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Figure it out. But I mean, I mean, like the, the, the solution is, uh, the, the question is just how early do you need to get to the airport? And like, you can just get there earlier. You'll be fine. If you yeah, if you I don't like know. It. It's going to be very interesting t- with my wife's anxiety to see what what is stronger. We mm. need to get to the his normal airport anxiety. We need to get to the airport four hours ahead of time. But modern anxiety: how much time do you want to spend at the airport in the age of Omicron? Sure. <laughs> like I don't know. We might be min maxing that anxiety to a very manageable time at the airport. Mm-mm. Hello, oh. gentlemen. Hello. Are you about ready for, for some after things? Hello. When are you, when are you traveling, set? Maine? The Wednesday. Wednesday. The Wednesday. Yeah. No um, okay. Right, I couldn't go. get I couldn't get like a business flight or anything. Uh-huh. I have to do regular economy plus. So that means I have to do normal boarding and everything else like that. Okay. Um, um, and and maybe we could just uh, do we, this. We could skip picks. I'm sure if we if we really yeah. need to, to eke out some minutes here for for after things. Let's eat them. All right. You ready, Andrew? I'm set. All right. Let's go in three, two. Hello, and welcome to After Things. I'm Intermain, joined by Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hello. And Mr. Justin Robert Young. Hey, gang. It's it's your old pal, Jerbs. So uh, last week, previously on... We discussed an email from Mr. Big Jim, James Thatcher, Mm -hmm. and he listened, and he has a follow-up, lengthy follow-up here. Yes. I think it might might be double the word count of his uh, haiku book. (laughs) Uh, So I will, uh, I'm going to, I'll go ahead and read this in entirety because we spent a lot of time talking about it, and I think letting him have his his response here I think would be helpful. Uh, Okay. This is from James. So let's clear some stuff up. One, the book was launched a while ago, and I was number one in logistics for a week and have fallen down the charts, which is fine. I never expect to be number one or highly ranked in poetry. It's just a bonus to me. Fair point. That and, was and comedy. It, 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 we, 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 we got to that email a little while after he yes. actually sent it. So yes. that is yes. why there's a gap between. Yeah. That. Yes. Two, I did the book because I was angry, frustrated, and always wanted to write a book. There was something noble about being able to say you wrote a book on something. I remember Brian specifically talking about writing a scam school book because he could put on his promo that he was an author. I chose KDP, Kindle uh, Desktop, I think it's Kindle Digital Publishing, because it was the fastest way to get a physical book and ebook out into mass at the given time, and the cost barrier was literally a non factor. This is Andrew speaking. KDP is a fantastic thing. That's how I got started as a writer. If you're interested in writing or self-publishing, I highly recommend it, and I would use that. There, there are companies that offer publishing services. You're better off just hiring an editor and using KDP because most of those, I think, are not uh, 
a good idea. Uh, I, I, would also, I would also just say, uh, Justin talking, that uh, uh, it's great. Get to the end of doing something like that. If you ever want to be involved in, in self-publishing, it is so helpful to just do that full process and just know what it literally feels like to hit publish and see your thing in the store. Three, the 24-hour period. We talked about, this is Andrew, we talked about his goals to write in 24-hour period. Let's talk about that for a second. It only takes 48 poems to be considered a poetry book. Scam part one, low barrier to entry. And haikus are poems that are very fast to write, edit, and critique. Scam part two, faster technicality of scam part one. I actually wrote all the poems over the course of like three hours. I actually wrote about 60 haikus and chopped the ones I didn't like and refined the rest several times. So there were editing there. So there was editing there. Also, if you look at the name of the book, it's a haiku as well as bonus scam. Give them content for free with the product name. So why only 24 hours? Because I know myself and I know that this isn't my job. I don't have a passion to do that part of the book work longer than a short amount of time. I've had several attempts at writing a novel based around the logistics industry only to peter out after the first or second chapter because of lack of interest in the book work of writing. Or I get distracted by the thing that actually pays me money. Uh, smiley, sort of the big D. Okay. Uh, number four, I, I don't want to be known only as an author. It's just something that I wanted to add to my quiver and repository of life experiences. Could I do this on Twitter as well and gain fame there? Sure. In fact, I do this on LinkedIn and I do a little better there because well, targeted audience. Very good point. Uh, number five, my goal is and never been to be the Andrew main of writing and logistics role. Never be the Andrew main of anything. Trust me. There's much yeah. better options. Uh, the Justin and Robert Young of political analysis, the customs compliance. Even, even worse, or, even worse. Yeah or the Brian Brushwood showmanship in the distribution market. My goal is to be the James Big Jim Thatcher as jack of all trades for my field. Promotion for myself in the areas I'm most interested in and add simple points to resume, speaker, bio, or LinkedIn profile. I hope this makes sense. I know it's a long email, but hell, you guys spent 20 minutes talking about it. Also, I have free copies into all of you, but the last time I spent something to the set, Seven Acre Shoot, it was sent back for a bad address. I love you all, Big Jim. Yeah, um, Jim. I would I would say, uh, Jim, again, thank you so much, one, for sending this response it's very it, we we love it when people write to after things we really do um and sometimes having us discuss things can be frustrating because you say a thing and then we're going to interpret it however we interpret it which and you're not people aren't there to say no guys i meant this and then we go off on tangents so i can understand how it could be frustrating to listen to us go on and on about something like no what i meant was this I think if your goal is like you say, hey, like, hey, I'm a guy in logistics and I want to add a thing to my bio because in the world of logistics and things like this, it's a neat thing to add. Yeah. Mission accomplished. I think that's a great thing. I think that, you know, we were we were thinking in the broader sense of poetry. I think in me and I'll speak only for myself, like when I heard poetry in IQ, I'm thinking like, oh, trying to make a mark on poetry. OK, like one, I don't know anything about that. And it's a world I don't get. But when you're like, yeah, no, I'm. I'm a logistics expert. I get this. And I think if I write this book on this, then I add that to my resume. Other people in logistics and stuff like this who see this will go, oh, that's really cool. And as a speaker, oh my God, what great material. Because you can go up in front of your audience and read some haiku on this. And they're all going to laugh at this thing that other we'd be like, well, I don't understand. But they will get it. I think it's brilliant. I think that's really great. I believe that there is a tremendous worth of doing a thing. No matter what the thing is, do it to completion, get it out there, understand that this is what the revolution looks like. And, and if I were to do more, better, uh, or, or uh, more often, then this is what I would have to do. I'm not saying that, Big Jim, this is you. I'm saying in general, if you believe that you can benefit either as a hobby or possibly you believe that you could make some element of a, a side hustle to career, out of a creative pursuit, you owe it to yourself. Once you've done it, you've gotten it out there to take seriously what the refinement techniques would be, what the elements of making it bigger and better would be. Uh, I was very, very lucky to be next to Andrew while he went from I'm going to write short stories to I'm going to write novels to I'm now working with a publisher and, and to be where he is right now. Uh, in terms of coming up with ideas, refining ideas, the, the the process of doing it. It's because Andrew took himself seriously enough to want to better his craft. Uh, there is a, a seductive element 
to say when you're just trying something out to be like, oh, look at me. I don't know, man. Just screwing around. I'm just having a great time screwing around. And that's fine, right? But if you want to get better, then identify where you could make this kind of stuff bigger and better and then go forward with it. So for, for Big Jim, look, if you're like, I wanted to do a thing, I did a thing, that's it, that's all, cool. That's great. If you wanted to make it better, I would say then then or bigger uh, or keep, whatever keep going down do the another road. do another right. thing along this path then what what my my point of view uh last week was was more along those lines like of of here are things that you can and 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 could do going forward i i and yeah Jim, I think like you have a very clear vision on what it is you wanted to get out of it, and I think it sounds like you've done a very good job of achieving that. So like, like absolutely correct. Like fantastic. And I think, you know, there, I think there's a, 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 there's a, there's a blending here, right? Like, yeah, you did this and you can put it on your LinkedIn and Hey, that's a fun, fun thing. And the next step with this, I think if you're interested is do it again or do find uh, find some other reason to go through the whole process once. I say that because, like, uh, um, uh, I'm going to paint with a very broad brush, but anybody can do something once. You can find your way to get through the end of something once. When Once you do it a second time, once you show that you're able to do it a second time multiple times, then if if this is something that you really want to show on on your LinkedIn, on your resume, whatever, as a skill that you have, do it a second time. Right, show that you have you 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 show that you not only have the ability to synthesize ideas, but really execute and take them to the finish line um, multiple times. You once you are doing that, once you are showing a, a little bit more commitment, if that is something that's that you think is valuable to you, Jim, I would recommend doing that. Find another, do another haiku book. You're gonna, it's gonna be faster. It'll be faster for you to do it the second time. I'm sure. Maybe not the writing part, but actually editing it, publishing it, getting it out there. Um, and you've shown that this you are more than just one fun idea, and maybe you just want one fun idea. That's totally fine. Yep, uh, perfect, perfectly done. If you wanted to, if you want to go another step without being like Bryce. Bryce, Bryce by the way, for audio <laughs> listeners, just clapped his hands like a blackjack dealer. No, I and, was, and, I was, yeah, I was waving my hands yeah. clean of it. <laughs> um, but I think there's a second step here that is short of I want to be a professional haiku. I want to be a professional poet. Um, I, 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 there, 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 I think you, there are other steps here if you're interested that still have that pragmatic, um, aug auxiliary role on your public profile. I, yeah, I, I feel like, uh, to the point you mentioned in the middle there that, you know, kind of, he, I think he got looking at the context of like getting what you needed out of it, as far as if you're trying to get, be a speaking, you know, speak about these topics or stuff like, uh. I look at, you know, I'm in a couple different narrow fields and I look in there, like, how do you stand out? How do you separate yourself? And in the world of authors, being an author is not a big deal, but in a world of people, if you're an artificial intelligence and you wrote a book on AI or did something that people liked or is well regarded, then all of a sudden you have your stature. And sometimes, sometimes unduly so too, because, you know, sometimes, you know, when people decide to talk about it with the way we assign expertise. So I think it was, a, I think it was a, it was a, it was a very clever idea. I think it's a very clever idea. And one of the things I think about too is when, when uh, one of the things that, that used to be a thing, it's still sort of a thing, like magicians, comedians would do this. When I'd work on the ships, like a lot of comedians would go write a book, like a 90 page book. And it would be, you know, just dumb jokes or stuff like this because it was an extra way to make money. It was yeah. an extra way to make money, but also people would, you would sell at the back of the room, the book's 10 bucks. And so if you get, you know, 10 or 12 people buy that per show. It's 120 bucks. You do two shows a night, you know, 250, 300 bucks, a couple nights a week. Like, you know, you're looking at 600, $700 that you can make from that. Yeah. And that became, you know, kind of a neat thing. I think often what happened is that, you know, then they'd be like, oh, and I'll add this product and this product. And a lot of times it, people kind of collapsed under the merchandising weight because they said, I'll just sell so many things. It's like, no, just, just do keep like a 10 or 15, an easy item that somebody has can, you don't have to make change for and whatever. There's sort of dynamics to that. Um, and then I watched some magicians do that, like magicians would start to do that. And then it's, it's, it's just, it becomes sort of a, an entry point. When I got into the, my first film festival, the feature film, 
I didn't really want to sell the film because it was like, okay, but it was the story of how it was made was more interesting. So I made a book about how I made the movie because it was a movie made for 99 bucks. And that was my calling card. And that became a neat calling card. And for big, you know, big Jim's, you know, calling card, it's a neat thing is if he meets people, whatever, hand on this book, hand on this funny book of haiku poetry and stuff about logistics. And if somebody's like, oh, we need a speaker, we need an expert or whatever, like, oh, well, this guy's fun. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's great. It's smarter than I realized. And it, you know, it's very honed into the audience. Like, and this was brought in before, but that's very smart. And to, to get this amount of response to it means means that you've had a incredible success i mean this is a very very narrow field and you're making you know material that is probably mostly um you know appealing understandable to people in that field and uh it uh, maybe cosmically there's there's a uh, there's only so much that so so much size that comes with that but that is in in the field that you want to stay in which is logistics and and global distribution stuff like that's that that it's you know it's it's a very good idea and i and i think that that you've done a good job with it i think so too let me just add one last thing that that might have colored both what i'm saying now and and what i said last week i don't particularly see the value of saying i wrote this in 24 hours agreed. even if you actually wrote it in 24 hours oh yeah agreed no i agree like, yeah i i yeah. i just think I watched Andrew write the bulk of like Grendel shadow in a day. Right. But it's not on like the, the front of it, you know, to say like written in 24 hours. It's the speed like, of the speed of it is there has to be a practical reason to the person who's like part of, uh, of uh, Andrew, one of, one of your, one of, one of the uh, 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 mini books that you wrote, how to write a novella in, in 24 hours. Like that there's value to that. There you're making a value proposition to the reader. I will, will learn how to be able to do this. But in terms of the actual making of it, I think you nailed it, Justin, that like people are, it, it's it's going to work against you. It, it, do, it doesn't bring you anything. It, it doesn't make you seem like a better creator. And uh, it seems shoddier. It, yeah. it will come across. It, it, I know you, you, I know you put work into it, but it will come across shoddier signals, in a way that you don't yeah. need to. You it, actually it, don't need to. It signals against the quality of the product. So that, that, that might be it is, is me kind of blanching at the idea of like, who cares if he actually did it, right? I'm sure that some of the coolest songs on the planet were written and recorded within 24 hours. Like, I'm not saying that that's like an, an invalid time. You're to not going to get better reviews on Amazon because it says yes. you made it in 24 hours. In fact, you're probably just going to attract people and you're, pr you're probably going to attract more criticism because of it. So, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah so, that's, 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 yeah, my last thing. So, uh, thank you again, Jim, for coming on. Let's go ahead and do any picks. Um, picks. Spider Man. I saw the Spider Man. Spider Man was out there. Boy, that Spider Man. Always Spider Manning the helm of uh of that city. And and boy, does he have a crazy adventure this time. Everybody went to the theater. It made more money <laughs> in its opening weekend than than a, a Force Awakens did, which is which is uh, uh, says says a lot, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, he does whatever a spider can. It's Spider Man. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll pick Hawkeye. I uh, actually liked Hawkeye this week, so I liked it. Wasn't it good? I thought I liked, it was pretty I liked good. It. I liked uh, it. So Hawkeye on Disney Plus. Andrew? Right, I'm curious. I'm curious to try this Hawkeye. I will, I shall try this Hawkeye. Uh, I I, I will say point. first uh, couple episodes. Whew. It's uh, a little Disney yeah. Channel. A, a lot of it is Disney Channel original movie. Uh, uh they they hone in on the characters I, as it goes along. I would love to pick a couple shows from a major tech company that now does streaming, um but I've not been able to finish any of their series because they are not good and the, the showrunners do a horrible job of pacing and make things. I thought I'd try something else and I'm three episodes in and I'm like, how can I be into three episodes into a big event movie? And I'm watching the most silly sort of human things. And then meanwhile, we cut back to a six minute long scene where nothing happens about a character. I, I just, I'm not naming names, garbage, okay. garbage, just, just tons of money thrown into this. So I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about the sheer disappointment that is. Okay. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I am going to talk about my favorite tool again, which is VS Code by Microsoft. Hey. VS Code is an environment where you can code in. And I discovered something one a week, two weeks ago. Buddy of mine's like, 
I've talked about the coding notebook, the idea that the code notebook allows you to do code, see it execute, and then do more code. So if you want to test things out, which is really cool, it's new, normal for Python. You can do that. In VS Code, there's a thing that lets you do JavaScript. So if, let's say you're playing on a JavaScript. If you save a file with .nnb, it's actually a node notebook. What that means, if you were trying to learn how to do a language like JavaScript, is you could type it into a cell, see it execute, then type something below it and go work it. Um, this means probably nothing to most people here, but it's actually really fun and cool. And if you ever want to dive into code, please do. And I would like to know to our two listeners to this episode. Um, Big Jim and any, whoever else. <laughs> yeah. If anybody would ever like me to do, hey, how to get started in coding, I would love to talk about that because uh, it changed my life. Changed my life. I was just a mediocre Wall Street Journal bestselling author, <laughs> Shark Week guy. You know, nothing. And then he learned nothing. to code. <laughs> then I learned to code. <laughs> and now look at me, everybody. And it is it is difficult to get into coding, you know? Like, uh, I, I talked about this when I started my jo that JavaScript course earlier this year. Like, I didn't know what you coded in. I did not know oh. how to do any of that. It turns out the answer oh. is VS Code, and it's, like, free and really good. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, where does code live? Like, I, I built no the thing. I don't know what Git, Where does GitHub it go? Does. Where do I, where do I code, Papa? Papa, where? <laughs> GitHub? Why are we calling him a Git? That doesn't seem nice. <laughs> you know, repo? That sounds a little weird. So, yeah, I, there, I, the number, the things that I go now that I'm going, well, obviously it's this, that like five years ago did not know a lot. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. All right, everybody. Thank you. It's been after. Papa! There we go. Alrighty, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here for Weird Things and After Things. We will be back hours with Cord Killers. Uh, we have a special guest one. Meryl Barr will be joining us. So that'll be fun. And we're going to be doing the Killies. We'll be recording the Killies. So a little bit of a shorter show. And then we're doing some year-end Killies. So check that out. And Jermaine on Here's Twitter. Oh, yeah. What's up? Here's yeah, my advice to anybody with a streaming network looking to hire showrunners. If that showrunner has ever made a movie with a franchise, in both cases, go look at their movie. If that was a franchise killing movie, don't let them run your franchise. Mm. Don't give them a bunch of money to run IP. Twice they've done this. Okay, interesting. Yay. Well, we'll find out what that is off the air. <laughs> uh, <laughs> very cool. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll check out in a little bit. Bye. Bye.